with the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the black and red trim. He tipped in at an even 225 pounds. This gentleman has 16 wins, one loss, one draw, with 10 knockouts. He is ranked number seven by the World Boxing Council from Queens, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mitch Blood Lee. Lee. Wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 215 and one quarter pounds. This young man is undefeated in 20 professional bouts with 19 knockouts. From Catskill, New York, ladies and gentlemen, here's Mike Tyson. Tyson. One of the things we're going to have to see here is whether the Crook Tillich fight was a meaningful learning experience for Tyson or whether it exposed a weakness he's always going to have to fight to overcome. In the state of Nevada, and was so much a factor in the last fight that we showed you here on HBO, that between Larry Holmes and Michael Spicks. Round one, Mike Tyson right on top of Mitch Green. Just as expected, uh, Mike Tyson comes out like a locomotive going straight for Mitch Green. Green, uh, what he's going to have to do to be successful is to box. Pretty much do the same thing uh, a boxer should do to a, a puncher. Keep that jab in his face and not be intimidated by his punching power. Mike Tyson and his corner man, Kevin Rooney, his trainer, were not real pleased with the Tillis fight because they said, both of them said, that he didn't double up. He just was a little bit lazy, especially in the later rounds. So we'll see what he does about that against Mitch Green. Well, Mike Tyson told me the fact that he was somewhat uh, a little reluctant to go full steam because he was going 10 rounds. I had the same experience when I fought my first 10 round in Baltimore. It was right there by Vegas, but it's, it's in your mind, you know, the fact that can you go additional two rounds. But being a condition like Tyson, there is no major problem. Heavy-handed fighter. They say heavy-handed like George Foreman, but much faster than George Foreman. He has them. He told us he definitely has a fear when he climbs into the ring. He says, I think any normal human being who says they're not afraid, not nervous when they get in a boxing ring is either crazy or lying. What is your journey? It's that anticipation of facing uh, your opposition, uh, knowing that he's capable, and the fact the crown here. The mystery is complaining about the, uh, the head of Mike Tyson. You see what's happened, Tyson is not allowing Mitch Green to punch. He's staying right in his chest, he's smothering his punches. Staying close to his punch, staying close to his opponent. It's similar to Joe Frazier. Always aggressive, right in front of his man. Now this is a head movement by Mike Tyson. That was about a three punch combination by Mitch Green, Ray. But once again, it looks like Green is off balance when he throws his punches. Well, the mistake that Mitch Green makes is the fact that he doesn't pull me this his fist. He's slapping his punches, and uh, you have to make a guy like Mike Tyson respect you. Have get those punches in and get him a shot. That's the uppercut that was uh, I was looking for quick tillers. Remember, this is only the first round. It's a very up-tempo first round. Good uppercut there by Tyson. And shots to the body. Another thing that uh, Rich Green is doing, he's trying to tie up Mike Tyson. He's not doing too, too good of a job now. He can't allow Tyson to get inside and work his body. Because in doing so, his body shot slows down your uh, maneuverability. That punch did land after the bell. Right there. That last punch. A grazing punch. Customato taught what has been called the peekaboo style, holding the gloves up close to the face while you're coming forward. He wanted his fighters to be entertaining and aggressive, but not to lead with their chins. 
And you'll see that that's what Tyson tries to do. He's not been successful mainly because he's not tying his man up right. Got to grab those arms. You heard Mitch Green's corner tell him, tie him up in there. Then that of some of Customato's former pupils. I'm sure Larry Merchant will talk a little more about that, but his gloves are actually down around his chin rather than up on his cheeks. What, I, what I'm looking forward to seeing, whether or not uh, the, this coaching by Mitch Green is going to frustrate Tyson because it has a tendency to really uh, frustrate a fighter. Good left hand by Tyson. Green got a couple of punches in. But as far as how solid those punches are, there's no comparison. Now Green holding and hitting. The warning here from Mitch Green from holding behind the head. See, and again, Ray, it just strikes me that Mitch Green throws an awful lot of punches off his back foot, which it seems would just take away all the sting. Well, also, he, he, Mitch Green makes it as a bad habit of leaning back. Watch the left hook of Mike Tyson land. Every time Mitch Green moves backwards, Tyson's arms are shorter, so he's able to throw quicker shots. There's the left pick I was talking about. Those short shots, Barry, are very effective. The other thing that strikes me, Ray, is that Mike Tyson just seems to be right on top of his man before his opponent even gets a chance to take a breath. Well, he, st he stays right in his opponent's chest because what happens by him being so close, it compensates for his height, the disadvantage. You notice that there is no mouthpiece in Mitch Green's mouth. It is knocked out by a left hook. Green needs to keep that mouth shut. To Green's credit, he hasn't taken a backward step. Whether that's wise or not remains to be seen. You know, it's time and time again, that left hook, and those little short shots. Very effective shots. This is not the type of fight that Mitch Green want to have. And he did draw a warning from Luis Rivera, the referee, about holding Green's in trouble. Those shots to the body is doing his taking his toe. Really working. A lot of fire, a lot of leverage. The body shot. Watch for the left hook. There it is again, Barry. That hook is getting shorter, more powerful, and more effective. The uppercut's working beautiful for Mike Tyson also. When Blood Green was a gang leader, they say he had over a hundred men in his gang. Right now, he needs some of them. <laughs> and again, Mike Tyson bolting out of his corner right on top of Mitch Green. Tyson is so much physically stronger than Mitch Green, and he's using it to his advantage. He needs, Mitch Green needs to get outside, work his chair, and attempt to outmaneuver Michael Tyson. That's exactly what Green's corner. Green has been bleeding from inside the mouth, and I can't help but wonder if maybe might not have suffered some jaw problems when he lost his mouthpiece in that last round. When his mouthpiece was knocked out of his mouth, he kept his mouth open. Again, Barry, you have to watch these little short shots thrown by Mike Tyson. Very, very effective. You know, the last fight that Tyson had against Tillis, and what a shot. That was an awesome shot, and the mouthpiece is gone once again. Started to say, Tyson and his people weren't happy about the fact that he had, had a hand free in a situation just like this against Tillis, and he didn't take advantage of it. But is he doing that tonight? Well, the, the problem he's making, he cannot uh, keep Mike Tyson off of him. Those little inside shots is really busting up the mouth of Mike, or uh, Mitch Green, I'm sorry. Yeah, there was blood inside the mouth even between rounds, as we mentioned. He can't help it. He's breathing through his mouth. But I watched the left hook. The left hook is doing a great deal of damage. Even the uppercut of Mike Tyson has been effective. That was a right hand at the top of the head. Green breathing through his mouth. Hands high. He works his way in. That was a right hook. The man possesses so, so much power, he has dynamite in both hands. It really is impressive. And whatever punch that he's able to land against Mitch, it has a tendency to shake Mitch up. Those big broad shoulders, big arms. You see the exposed area to the body. You have to think, Ray, that maybe the Tillis fight woke him up. I'm going to show him that he is a conditioned athlete. He can go 10 rounds, so there's no need for him to slow down the momentum. Both hands. Now here we see 
why the, the mouthpiece come out with that left jab, and in fact, why it's so difficult for Green to move, because Tyson looks quick in there, and he looks like he's surrounded. Oh, yeah. Like Tyson is <laughs> anxious to get to work. He's well, I mentioned one other thing, too, and that is that it wasn't only the mouthpiece that Mitch Green lost. We have a production assistant over on the other side of the ring. Said in addition to his mouthpiece, it was a bridge with a couple of teeth in it. That will just give you an idea of how tough Mike Tyson is. Mike Tyson, in this ring, he's at home. I mean, he fights with so much authority, so much confidence, so much determination. Second time he has won, Green. Now, Green scored with a right hand, and it didn't slow Tyson up a bit. Good left hook, solid left hook. We're going to buy once again Mike Tyson with that free hand. The last time we saw Mitch Green in a preliminary fight on the Tubbs Witherspoon card, right? Lost his mouthpiece nine times. Left hand, top of the head. A lot of times, because of the damage they've done to a person's nose, they have to breathe through the mouth so they get rid of their mouthpiece. Not a smart thing to do because their mouthpiece protects you from a broken jaw. Green now waving over to his corner to let him know that he's okay. But instead of dropping that right hand and the left hook of, of uh, Mike Tyson is very, very fast. That was another big shot right there. You notice that uh, Tyson walks in. He keeps those hands high. Yeah, in fact, that's what he says. When we asked, I asked him yesterday what his best weapon was, and he said, my elusiveness. He has said nothing about his punching power. He said, I'm elusive. That's what I did best. Now, see, this is, this is how I got knocked out by Kevin Allen by moving around too much. You gotta slow down a little bit. Inside of 10 seconds. That free hand to the body. And that's something that he did not do against Quick Tennis. They don't have any bells on the street corners. <laughs> Incidentally, although it's not that important since Tyson won the last round anyway, the referee took the round from Green for holding. Just a second ago, uh, Mitch Green got a little upset with the referee. I guess the referee was trying to warn him for holding, and Mitch Green indicated that he was boxing. Another big left hook. A running left hook by Mike Tyson. Green moves backwards. He's only given momentum to the to Tyson. Because Tyson's going straight ahead. He's coming straight ahead. Tyson not, is not breathing hard. So that tells you that he's not concerned about going to distance. Going well, 10 rounds. In fact, we talked to him about that. He's talking, Tyson's talking to Mitch now. In the Tillis fight, he fought hard for about five rounds, and then he seemed to coast a little bit. Look at the way he's doing now, Barry. Big right hand. Good. And that gravel Mitch Green for a second there. The reason you tie a fight up is to at least clear your head or either to, um, to throw off his timing. Well, just how hard Mike Tyson hits can be learned in talking to some of the people who fought. Look at the look at here, look at here. He's just laughing at him. And Green seems to me ready to be doing all the wrong things. That's a very good body movement by Mike Tyson. I'm impressed with that. And he's having fun. And see, Miss Green is not getting any type of respect from Mike Tyson, mainly because he's not making a fist when he throws his punches. Good out to Another big left hand. What beautiful uppercut. Left hook, right uppercut. I like this here. Inside. What Tyson is doing to uh, Mitch Green. I started to say about some of his opponents and what they say. I fought a guy named Eddie Richardson. They asked him, have you ever been hit so hard? He said, yeah, about a year ago. I was hit by a truck. A lot of blood from Mitch Green's mouth. Punching combination. One, two. Combination. 
There's Mrs. Green. A really nice woman. She's a beautiful lady. When Green lands those, I don't know, slaps on Tyson, it's it's almost like a washerwoman slapping some clothes on a rock. It's just nothing happens. He, he, this Green has to do more than just slap because he has to stop that momentum of Tyson. Look, you notice the jab, the powerful jab of Tyson. It knocks the head back. Just for thinking in Mitch Green's corner, too, they were telling him that Tyson's getting tired. I don't see that. I doubt that very seriously. Tyson's just as strong as he was in the very first round. He made it to the midsection. He's landed with a, a lot of good left hooks, solid left hooks. One thing you have to give to uh, Mitch Green, he has a durable chin. He's taking some tremendous shots. Another big left hook. Said after he finished the Tillis fight, he did pace himself. And what a right hand. There is such frustration in the face of Mitch Green. I mean, every time he throws a punch and it misses, it seems to me that uh, he wants to just walk away. I like the fact that Tyson used what he has. I mean, he has power, he has speed, has a good chin, and a huge neck. I mean, he is so tenacious. He's not letting up, keeping those hands high. It's only a reassurance that he's capable of going 10 rounds at full speed. Look at here, you can tell that he is not concerned about going the distance, uh, throwing those shots, combination to the body, and not breathing. Look at him, he's not breathing at all. interesting to see what he does from here on out because it was from the seventh round on against Tillis that he sort of coasted and he finished with about a third of a tank of gas we're talking about Tyson so let's see if he uses up that gas here what is what there, there again, Mitch Green is throwing his punches, not doing any damage. Is this a good test, you feel, for Tyson? Chopping right hand. I mean, Tyson, they're a good uppercut. What a uppercut. All that um, Mitch has been doing, Mitch Green has been doing, was basically retreating. He was taking a stand eventually. Another couple body shots. Look at the uppercut. And he said this, he said this great upper uppercut. He throws his left jab, green goes down, and up comes the right uppercut. A lot of booze from the fans, mainly because that Mitch Green is doing a lot of holding. Taking a lot of punches and a lot of hard punches. Tyson's not that impressed with Mitch Green. The crowd wants magic, and I think that Tyson would like to give them some magic, but his opponent isn't cooperating at the moment. He's not acting like a girl who's letting him pull the rabbits out of his hat. He's fighting with a lot of neighborhood pride, and he wants to hang in there as long as he can. To throw two, three chairs like, a, like he uh, does in a bag, but the bag doesn't hit back. Tyson hits it back. Actually, a little bit slower this round than he has been. A little bit more leaning going on in this well, round. He would throw, Tyson would throw more punches if uh, Green didn't tie him up. That was a good attempt with that right hand for Tyson. And now we see uh, Mitch Green. He landed with a good uppercut there. Green just trying to tie Tyson up. And a couple of good shots by Mitch Green. 
his best rally of the fight right here. Look here, now he's caught Tyson four or five times, and Tyson for the first time seems a little bit puzzled. Well, he's smiling. Tyson is smiling, but see, Green has those fast hands. Good body shot by Miss Green. That was in a different Mitch Green. That was his right hand. It's just even sitting 30 feet away like we are, it makes you wince. Oh, well, you can, you can, you can feel the impact of his punching. See, also, Mitch Green is not tying his middle properly. He's holding behind the head, which he allows those shots like that to land. That was another good shot to the ribs by Tyson. Tyson said one time, he said, I understand anatomy. Here again. Oh, what a left hand. And this is going to happen all the time because, again, you see the way that Mitch Green has his hand behind the head of Tyson. Watch Tyson should go to the body here. See the body shots. This is an awfully good fight for Mike Tyson. It indicates that his management wants to get him tested. They want to get him into a position not where he's merely going to be maneuvering into a title fight to fight a title fight, but that somewhere down the road he will have had the training to win a title fight. Tyson draws a warning for headbutts. and what have you, and um, he's just taking advantage of every opportunity. Tyson's arms are short, so he has a tendency to loop his punches. Some are somewhat telegraphed, but because he has speed behind his punches, he's able to get away with it. And then he can bang away at the body with a free hand. That uppercut was short. Tyson's corner wanted him to punch a little bit more. He hasn't really punched a lot more in this ninth round. It was, again, it's difficult to punch a man who's tying you up and holding. Let's see here. For Mitch Green, it's, it's pretty much survival. I've seen a different Mitch Green. He fought Percy Davis in Atlanta and was a more determined and a more of a, a boxer. Here he's basically just trying to sit down. That seems to be something that runs through all of Mike Tyson's opponents, that they all are in there to survive. I'm not sure that can be said about I don't know if Mike Tyson is living up to your <laughs> expectations, but I'd remind you that Joe Lewis went the distance three times in his first 20 fights, Joe Fraser a couple of times, Rocky Marciano a couple of times in his first 21 fights. Some opponents just don't cooperate. <laughs> Curious here, Ray, whether Tyson will be satisfied to go out winning or does he want to go out closing the show in a sensational style? Well, the way he's geared up now, he wants to go out in style. He wants to see a very aggressive Mike Tyson as well. Tyson wants to go to work, but uh, Green here doesn't want to fight, it appears to me. This is a bad performance from Miss Green. And um, he has some grievances with Don King but not get the type of money that he wants, but the fact is, he has to prove himself here. And the mouthpiece goes again. He has to prove he deserves the money. Green trying to go to the body. Tyson leaning on him now a little bit. What's going to happen um, is um, 
Tyson gets further for his career, he's going to figure out a better way to approach fights like this. Those shots, are, I love those body shots. It slows him down and the punches went off, especially if you have the power. But as I was saying earlier, bro, the fact that this, these type of fights is good for Mike Tyson because he's going to learn how to approach taller opponents more tactically. He's going to learn how to cut the ring off and uh, even score more effective punches. Moving that head very well, Tyson. Took a couple of shots, but still. The only problem I see with the, excuse me, Bernie, the only problem I see with Tyson is the fact he comes in sometimes put those hands down a little too low. Because if you need, need a good puncher, the speed uh, could prove be disastrous. But now he's he's doing he's doing a job. So remember, he knocked out his first 19 opponents, went the distance with Tillis, and now likely will go the distance with Mitch Blood Green. The crowd not real thrilled with the goings on here. The crowd come in to see a fight, boxer puncher, and uh, it's been uh, pretty much of a dance for Mitch Green. I'm sure Mitch Green will be disappointed uh, in this performance. And we've come to just about the end of it here. Another day in the classroom, big left hand to end things. So Mike Tyson has gone 10 rounds for the second time in less than a month. Ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden, we have a unanimous decision. And the scoring by rounds as follows. Judge George DiGabriel observed the fight 8-2. Judge Pat Dolan watched it at 9-1. And Judge Georgie Colon observed the fight, 9-1. For the winner, for his 21st straight win in his many months, Mike Tyson. Tyson.